I'm going to show you the five basic methods for playing an audio file in Unity from a script. Play, play one shot, play clip at point, play delayed, and play scheduled. Play will trigger whatever audio clip is set on the audio source. It's the most common method of triggering audio, and is most suitable for playing looping sounds and music. This is because some other methods, such as play one shot, can't trigger looping sounds, and also because using play will only allow one clip to be played at a time. If you call play on an audio source that's already playing, it'll stop the audio source and start the clip again. Play one shot is a lesser known method of triggering a sound on an audio source, but it's extremely useful for triggering sound effects. Unlike Play, which will trigger whatever audio clip is in the audio clip field, Play One Shot specifically takes a parameter for the audio clip. This means that you must specify what clip you want to play when you call Play One Shot. If, however, you just want to play whatever clip is on the audio source, like you would with Play, then you can just pass a reference to that clip by using the clip property of the audio source. You can also set an optional volume scale when calling Play One Shot. This takes a float value between 0 and 1, and adjusts the volume of the clip relative to the volume of the audio source. This is great for variation, because it means that you can pass in a randomised volume value or play two different clips at different volumes without changing the overall volume of the audio source itself. Play One Shot is ideal for sound effects, especially repeating sounds, as triggering Play One Shot on an audio source that's already playing will overlap the sounds instead of interrupting it, like it would with Play. This makes Play One Shot especially suitable for rapid fire sounds, but be careful not to allow too many sounds to overlap all at once. Despite only playing from one audio source, two sounds triggered via play one shot will count as two voices. And even though the maximum voice limit can be increased from the default 32, different platforms have different limitations. So it's good practice to try to keep the total voice count as low as possible to avoid sounds being culled. Play clip at point works in a similar way to play one shot with one big difference it doesn't require an audio source to work. This is great for one-off sounds, as you won't need to add an audio source component to an object. You can just fire a sound once from a specified position in the scene without any fuss. Play clip at point uses the audio source class instead of an instance of an audio source, so when calling it, you need to use audio source with a capital A. You also have to pass in a position that the audio clip will play from. In this example, I've used the position of the object that the script is attached to. Behind the scenes, Unity creates a new temporary audio source to play the clip from, and disposes of it once the clip is finished. In the editor, you'll see a new game object appear and disappear when this happens. This makes play clip at point especially useful when using an audio source component isn't an option. For example, playing a sound where an object is destroyed. If the audio source is on the object that's being destroyed, the sound will normally be cut off, or it may never get a chance to start, as the audio source now no longer exists. Using play clip at point instead allows the sound to continue after the object is destroyed via a temporary audio source that's neatly disposed of once the sound is finished. However, there is a catch. Because the audio source that the clip is played from is created at runtime, you don't get the option to change any of the audio source's settings. The audio source is created using default settings, with the exception of Spatial Blend, which is set to full 3D. This also means that you can't use Play Clip at Point with an audio mixer. The output will go directly to the audio listener, as it does by default. If you do need to change any of the audio source's settings, there are ways you can get around this by creating your own modified version of the Play Clip at Point functionality. However, in that scenario, it's probably going to be much easier to simply use a regular audio source anyway. Play Delayed and Play Scheduled allow you to play an audio source in the future in two different ways. The first, Play Delayed, takes a delay in seconds and is the simplest method for delaying an audio clip. This method is easy to use and is ideal for quickly changing the timing of an audio source. Examples of when you would use this include delaying the start of music, sound effects that occur after the event that triggers them, and other timing tweaks and randomizations. While Play Delayed is great for simple timing, it's not suitable for more precise timekeeping, like stitching two audio clips together or beat matching audio clips. For that, you need Play Scheduled. Play Scheduled works a little differently to Play Delayed, but it's incredibly precise. 
This is due to the fact that it operates using the actual audio engine time and takes a highly accurate double value instead of a float. To use it, you need to specify a time that the audio source should start, not a delay. This corresponds to the audio settings.dsp time, which is the number of seconds the audio engine has been running. There's a lot that you can do with Play Scheduled, so much so that I wrote a huge guide on just that, with examples of how to queue up clips, beat match audio, and how to end loops with musical stings. Check the description below for a link to that article. When scheduling audio using either method, you can't check if the audio has started or stopped using the is playing flag like you might expect. The audio source is considered to be playing as soon as it is scheduled and until after it is finished. This happens as soon as the audio source is queued, not when the sound starts. So is playing will be true, even if there is no sound being made yet. Hopefully you're now more familiar with the basic methods of triggering audio from a script in Unity. For code examples you can copy and paste, such as triggering a random sound or stitching clips together, try my blog using the link in the description below. And if you like this video, then like this video, leave a comment or subscribe for more from me.